Hi, I'm Walt, and this is Delta Astrophotography. And this time of year, I love taking photographs of the Milky Way core. Now, do you need big fancy cameras like this? Absolutely not. In this video, we're gonna photograph the Milky Way with a phone, whether it's an iPhone, a Samsung Galaxy, does not matter. That's what we're gonna do. So join us in today's episode of Space Madness. Now, I personally am a longtime Samsung Galaxy user. This is a Samsung Galaxy S21. This is what I'm gonna be using, but iPhone users, don't worry. We will be shooting with an iPhone too. The Samsung's camera has a feature called Pro Mode that allows you to dial in manual camera settings like ISO, shutter speed, and white balance, just like you would do with a DSLR camera. As far as I know, the iPhone's camera does not quite have as many manual camera settings, but you can get an app for around $12.99, I believe, that's called Pro Camera, that will give you all the manual camera settings. But for the sake of this video, we're just gonna be using the cameras that our phones came with. It's very important to have your phone on a tripod. This will keep your camera from shaking when you touch the shutter button. If it's not on a tripod, you're gonna end up with blurry, shaky looking stars. With the iPhone, setting your phone on a tripod for a few seconds actually unlocks longer exposure times at night, up to 30 seconds. I highly recommend using the app Stellarium on your phone to know where the Milky Way is gonna be. That'll help you frame up your shot later. You just open up the app, fast forward till nighttime, and scroll around until you see where the Milky Way is gonna be. You're gonna to wanna to go out on a night when there's no moon or clouds. So keep that moon phase and the cloud forecast in the front of your mind. And just as importantly, you're gonna to have to avoid light pollution. So if you're trying to shoot from your backyard or maybe from a rooftop and you live in a town or a city, you're just not gonna be able to pick up the Milky Way. It's just gonna be one blown out mess. You have to get to a dark site away from light pollution to photograph the Milky Way. We're here in the Kaibab National Forest next to the south rim of the Grand Canyon. And tonight we're gonna to shoot the Milky Way through those trees. I'm team Samsung Galaxy, she is team iPhone. So we're gonna give this a shot. Okay, we're gonna start with the Lanus phone. It's the iPhone set up on a tripod facing the Milky Way. We're gonna start by hitting this button right here. It is the shutter speed button. Since it's on a tripod, it gives it the option to go all the way up to 30 seconds. So we're gonna try 30 seconds. Now we're gonna come up here and select the self timer button and set it to three seconds. That way when we hit the camera shutter button to take the picture, the camera won't be shaking when it's finally taking the photograph. All right, it's gonna count down from 30. I'm gonna go ahead and cut and come back when it's done. All right, we're done. Let's open up the photograph. And there is a gorgeous photograph of the Milky Way taken easily with an iPhone. Now let's go ahead and switch over to the Samsung Galaxy. All right, this is the camera app in the Samsung Galaxy. We're gonna go ahead and go to more at the top and select pro mode. Now we're gonna change our ISO at the bottom to about 800. I think that's a good starting point. Anything higher than that, it's just gonna be way too noisy. Next, we'll change our shutter speed to about 20 seconds or so. I think 20 seconds is, is pretty good in combination with this ISO. Now the Samsung Galaxy does not autofocus nearly as well in the dark as the iPhone does. So I have to manually focus. And one thing I like to do is practice during the daytime I'll go ahead and try to manually focus to infinity focus where everything is in focus. And as you can see right here, infinity focus ends up being about 0.7. So that's what I need to set my focus to at night when I can't see anything. So we'll go ahead and set our manual focus to 0.7 to make sure we're at infinity focus. And we'll go ahead and hit the button and take the photograph. Once again, this is gonna take about 20 seconds, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut and come back when it's done. All right, and here's what the photo looked like. I took a few images, so let's compare the two. I like this one, but I think I like this one even better. Yeah, yeah, this one's definitely better. Now we're gonna go ahead and jump in the computer and take a closer look at the photos. We're gonna compare them and see what you can expect from your phone. 
Okay, we'll start with the iPhone. On first glance, is a very clean looking image, especially if you see this on a phone. Now we've kind of got it blown up on the big computer screen. We'll zoom in a bit. And the first thing I notice is that, well, A, when you pixel peep, the stars aren't perfectly round. 30 seconds was probably a bit too long, but you're not really even gonna notice unless you're zooming way in. So I think this is fine unless you're blowing it up. The second thing I noticed is that the iPhone has applied some pretty heavy noise reduction to this. Now, for those of you who don't like dealing with noise reduction and a lot of post-processing in Photoshop or Lightroom, then this is gonna be great for you. The iPhone is already taking care of that. It's almost pretty much Instagram ready. Just throw a filter on it or do a few saturation adjustments and you're good to go. Now, another thing I don't necessarily like about the heavy noise reduction is that it's really smoothed out the Milky Way a little bit too much to where you can't see a lot of that fine dust detail. But like I said, if you're looking at this on a phone screen, then this looks really good. I'd be very curious to see the results of the Pro Camera app that costs $12.99. All right, now let's move over to the Samsung Galaxy. The first thing you're gonna notice here is there's a lot more stars, and that's because there is no noise reduction on this image. If we zoom in, this is nowhere near as clean. It is very, very noisy. You can see a lot of grain in the trees. It's just an overall kind of messier looking picture, except because there's no noise reduction, I've got a lot more fine detail in this Milky Way right here. Another thing that's different about the Samsung photo is it's saved as a D and G file, which stands for digital negative, as opposed to a JPEG. This is a kind of raw file, which means I can do a lot more processing without causing further harm or damage to it. And because I'm already an astrophotographer, I've got the proper tools to remove the noise, to reduce the stars, all that stuff. So the final image ends up looking more like this, which has a lot less noise, a lot cleaner, and a lot of detail. So here's our iPhone final image and our Samsung final image. Overall, the iPhone looks a lot cleaner and smoother due to all the noise reduction, but I think there's so much more detail in the Samsung. You guys let me know which one you like better in the comments. And there you have it. I hope you're able to get your phone and your tripod and go out somewhere and shoot the Milky Way while it's still Milky Way season. That'll be going on through early October or late September. If you liked or got anything out of this video, let me know in a comment or hit the like button. And the trip that I went on to the Grand Canyon and to another place in the New Mexico desert, that will be my next video that is coming out in a week from the release of this video. So stay tuned for that. Definitely subscribe. All right, guys. Getting out of here, stay spacey, clear skies. See you next time.